So here's my plan for opening this talk. I was going to come out here, right here at this spot on stage, and then I was going to stand here in silence for like 10 seconds which to me felt like a good enough span of time for you guys to size me up, for you to determine my credibility as a speaker, for you to figure out a little bit about who I am as a person and where I fit into this world, if you want to be friends with me, if life has been easy for me. And then I really started to think about it, and I was like, I'm going to stand here, and you guys are just going to stare at me and then I'm gonna stare at you, also I can't see you when I'm up here. And I was like, this is gonna be so awkward. And all of a sudden, 10 seconds started to feel like a really long time. And so then I did a little bit of research to how long it actually takes for your brain to figure all of that out. And if I had done my original plan, if I had stood here for as long as it takes for your brain to feel like it knows me, I wouldn't have even made it from there to here, unless I ran really fast and I'm wearing heels and so I don't. <laughs> Because it doesn't take, I'm glad you guys laughed at that, thanks. <laughs> it doesn't take 10 seconds for our brains to feel like it really knows someone. It takes a tenth of a second. Literally a snap of the fingers in our brain could write a novel about someone before ever even speaking a word to them. And so this makes me kind of cranky. Because there's this woman inside of me who is like, I am so much more than this adorable human standing here to you today. <laughs> I have a lifetime of experiences. I have stories that I would love to share. And before anybody goes writing a novel about me, I think they should know. And so wouldn't it be so cool if there was a way for us to easily show people who we really are? If there was a way to show what inspires us, what makes us tick, if there was a way for us to choose, let's say, nine square perfect images with perfect captions, of our perfect lives, so that I could come up here and tell you, I'm really more than adorable, I'm also perfect. <laughs> I like you guys. Does this sound familiar to you guys, or is this, is this just me? And isn't this how the process goes? We realize at some point that we don't know each other, and we realize that we can't know each other in these one-tenth of a second snap judgments that we're making. And so we want to share more, we want to learn more about each other. And so we have all the best intentions when we dive wholeheartedly into these nine squares and we think that we're showing people who we really are. And then somewhere, somehow along the way, we forgot that that was the point. And so what this has turned into is that at three in the morning when I wake up and I'm scrolling Instagram, I can find out what anyone has had for breakfast or where they went on vacation or how many times they've been to the gym this week. And then we start to convince ourselves that we're really getting the whole picture of other people. But we stop to ask ourselves, we don't ask ourselves, if we're giving other people the whole picture of us. We start only showing off the cool things that we do instead of who we may be. And we are not human doings, after all. We are human beings. And so we have this tool that we think is helping people get to know us, and that's not how we're using it. And the problem with that is that we forget it. The problem with that is that we are more connected than we have ever been, and we know less about each other than we ever have. And this is because, thanks for that, we aren't striking up conversations anymore because we just go check their Instagram. And this is because we have stopped asking people questions because we feel like we already know. We are on the verge of completely replacing connecting with posting with replacing telling stories to writing captions, with replacing empathy with leaving a comment. We are this close, you guys, to replacing facial expressions with emojis, which are adorable, don't get me wrong, but they really don't do the human experience justice. <clears throat> so, I want to tell you guys a little bit about who I really am. I'm going to take that off the screen so you guys don't get distracted. I am a photographer, and I am very good at my job. And I am good at my job, thank you again, <laughs> because I love, love, love my clients. And sometimes when you're good at something, you think that it can solve the world's problems. 
because you think you're so stuck, you don't know what to do, and you have this camera, and you have these unique skills, and hopefully this will help someone. So when I picked up my camera for the first time, I set out to photograph women, college-aged women, family women, career women, women like you and women like you, to solve the world's problems by helping them share who they really are. I wanted to give them images to show the world this is who I really am. And in case they didn't feel like the person that they were was worthy of being seen or being known, I told them, I want you to know that you're beautiful, and I'll take your picture and prove it. And so for years, I did just that. I photographed thousands of women, and I know that deep down, I helped them feel beautiful and confident, and I thought that's what mattered. So when my pictures were getting added to those nine squares, I thought I was changing the conversation. I thought I was helping these people feel known through their beauty, and that they were able to use Instagram, this tool, in a different way. I thought that my images were changing the way that these girls interacted with the world. And tell Jennifer. I would like to introduce you to Jennifer. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> Jennifer was one of my most favorite clients before we had ever even met. I followed her on Instagram, and so I thought I knew her super well. <laughs> I knew what she did on the weekends. I knew that she looked great in a bathing suit. I knew she liked hiking. I knew she was really involved in school when she was a fraternity sweetheart. And so when she walked into my office for our first one-on-one -on -one session, I was so excited to talk to her because I felt like I already knew her. And I remember the moment that she walked in and she was wearing these little shorts, and she had a fraternity pin on them. And I said, oh, is your boyfriend in that fraternity? And she said, he was. And I remember thinking, what do you mean he was? I even asked, what do you mean he was? And she said, he actually passed away a year ago. And I thought to myself, he could have only been like 19 or 20. You don't die at that age. And when she told me that Aaron committed suicide, my whole worldview shifted. And all the things that she had ever posted about hiking or beaching or being part of this fraternity, Aaron's fraternity, came into focus for the first time. And this girl, this woman in front of me, came into focus for the first time. And I remember thinking, how have you handled so much? And how have you handled so much that from someone who feels like I know you because I follow you on Instagram? How did I miss that? And what else did I miss? Because I was being distracted by this illusion of connection that we call Instagram. And what else did I miss? And what do I not know? And so when she told me that she stayed in Aaron's bed for so long that her friends had to bring her food into his room because she couldn't even leave to eat, I asked myself, how was she supposed to post that? How did I really expect to know her, to love her, when I didn't know the story? So after our photo session, Jennifer wrote me this text. She said, thank you so much for being so easy to talk to about anything and everything. Most people prefer to steer away from awkward and uncomfortable conversations like Aaron's death, but you somehow did the exact opposite and made me feel even more comfortable. I can't tell you how much I appreciated the entire afternoon. And so all this time, I thought that I was using my camera to make these girls feel beautiful. And then I realized that what these girls are taking away from it is that I was making them feel heard. I told myself that I had my camera and my unique skills, and that is what was making an impact on the world. But really, what I have that is the most impactful isn't unique at all. What I have that is the most impactful each and every one of us sitting here today has, and that is the power to listen. Mr. Rogers once said, there is no one I couldn't learn to love once I've learned their story. So after Jennifer, I relearned how to love my clients. I thought this whole time that I was loving them because of how I was encouraging them, because I made them feel beautiful with my camera. And now I realize that I can only love Jennifer, my clients, and everyone for that matter, by knowing them and knowing their story. And that has nothing to do with my camera after all. So now I use my camera differently, and I put my camera down. And I started asking questions after that day. Different questions, more questions. And I stopped using my camera to make these girls feel beautiful. 
And instead, I used my camera to empower them to tell their stories. As girls who handle a lot more than any nine perfect images with perfect captions could ever show. Each of us has a camera, each of us has something that we use to make people feel good in this world, that we use to do good in this world. We all want people to feel a certain way. Maybe you too want to make people feel beautiful, or maybe you want them to feel strong, or educated, or caffeinated, or fed, or healthy, or happy. But I implore you to not forget that people really just want to feel heard. Thank you.